The West Coast Swing was up and running indeed at Irwindale as the second round of the NASCAR Canon Pro Series West Tour lived up to everything. Intense action, dramatic moments, and a final lap that you won't believe that it ended with one car slamming the wall past start finish. All of that and more on the latest episode of West Coast Wednesday. And what are we waiting for? Let's talk about the race at Irwindale right now. Alrighty, episode number four of West Coast Wednesday, where I'll be discussing the Saturday race from Irwindale. Give my thoughts. How did I feel about it? Who stood out? Or who needs to showcase a lot more after what might be the best race of the whole entire weekend? Not just for NASCAR, but all around the racing world. And it lived up to everything from start to finish. There was no holding back. And a last lap that was just simply incredible. So without further ado, let's take a look at the highlights. Haley Deegan led the 21 car field to the green flag in front of a strong Irwindale crowd, but it wouldn't last at all as Derek Krause takes the lead, entering turn number one and held on for 25 laps. NHRA Pro Stock Champion Tanner Gray showed strong pace in his DGR across the entry and made the bottom work to give by Krause for the lead. Meanwhile, Deegan began catching him by lap 40, being down one second. Cross, on the other hand, had to deal with Trevor Huddleston, which became the battle to watch, and several laps later, Cross lost the battle. Lap traffic stirred the pod in the race lead battle, allowing Deegan to catch Gray after drivers Todd Sousa, Jack Wood, and Ron Jay put him in difficult situations. The complexity of the race changed once Huddleston began losing pace, but a caution from Cody Vanderwall in lap 71 saved him. Vanderwall finished 18th, six laps down. This ended the first half with Gray as the leader. Huddleston stated that he had transmission issues, but hoped to have a strong result in the second half. We got some transmission problems, but uh, my team's the best there is. They're gonna get us tuned up uh, so we can stay in fourth gear. We got a really good car. Uh, watch for that nine up front. After a YMCA dance-off Gray, Cross had a picture-perfect restart heading into turn number one. It took the lead from Gray. The pole sitter and great battle for precision until the 80th lap when some contact between them sent Deegan into a spin, ending her shot of going back to back. Once misfortune became another skate and that was Brittany Samora who was now running in fourth and gradually improving as the race went on. What transmission! Huddleston's first major battle with Gray was for second and he indeed passed him, setting his eyes now on Derek Krause. Then on lap 112, Joey Tanner, who had a strong race at Vegas, would like to forget about Irwindale after spinning in turn number three, bringing out the third and final caution. Krause kept leading the race, but had three other hungry drivers who were eyeing not only to end Bill McAnally Racing's reign, but capture their maiden can and West victory. Some contact between Gray and Huddleston for second didn't stop them whatsoever, but the advantage went to Gray, who was catching Krause. Then in the closing laps, Gray's bid of a NASCAR victory nearly went awry after getting loose in turn three, allowing Kraus to pull away, and Huddleston getting by him with 15 laps to go. With seven laps remaining, a nice battle for four between Deegan and Jagger Jones was so relevant that the battle for the lead became a complete afterthought. However, Huddleston and Gray passed race leader Kraus, settling it down between those two, and it came down to it coming to the white flag as Huddleston had the lead and held the preferred top lane with Gray on the bottom. Those two kept at it throughout the lap without giving up their lane. And coming at the line, it's Gray, but no! Huddleston pulled a last second charge to not only hold up Gray, but capture his first k and West victory in his 17th start as he lost control and crashed into turn number one. He was all right and was able to celebrate with his entire Sunrise Ford, Bob Brucati racing team, and one proud papa indeed was Tim Huddleston. For Trevor, who had something to prove this season, it was an absolute thrill to win at a track that he knows oh so well. Oh my god, dude! That was unbelievable, man! Oh dude, not many times you get to tell the winner of the race, I love you son. That was amazing, dude. What you guys did out there, battling hard. Oh my god, dude. Last five laps, I had my head buried down over here and couldn't watch. They told me it was the last lap, white flag, you were coming in. I looked up off, to, off of the turn four and you were behind. You legged that thing all the way to the checkered flag at your house, Irwindale. Oh, man. 
I'm speechless. Oh, look at that. He says he hurts a little bit, a little bit of a hard lick down there. Trevor, the Bob Brincotti Sunrise Ford Special, led by Clinton Cram tonight. This is your house, baby, and you took home the hardware. How about that? Yeah, wow. Sunrise Ford, Bob and Maureen Brincotti, my entire crew, Clinton, Brett, Steve, Keith, Brian, Chris, my buddy, Will. He's been with me from the beginning. Happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Will. Hey, uh, Trevor. Here comes your car. <laughs> For Tanner Gray, he might have not won in his strong k and West debut, but certainly learned a lot that he'll hope to utilize in the second k and East race of the season at Bristol. Oh my God, you guys were racing. Tanner, what was going on out there? Dude, rookie in the series, you were battling for the lead. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of good side-by-side -side racing. Uh, I had a really good car, um, especially on long runs. I think we just got a little free in. Um, and, you know, I feel like if I would have moved to the bottom a few laps sooner, then uh, we probably would have come home a, one place ahead. But uh, it is what it is. We'll take uh, what we've learned here and go on to Bristol. Trevor Huddleston got his first career k and West win. Tanner Gray, in an incredible effort in just only his second k and Pro Series start combined. And alongside with the one start he made in the East so far in New Smyrna. Tremendous run. Derek Krause once again led the most slaps, but no victory to show for. He finishes third. Jagger Jones responds from a heartbroken second place in Vegas with a fourth place result. And Haley Deegan, despite the spin, scores a top five to keep the championship lead heading into the doubleheader in Tucson in May. And six, it was Cole Cabrera, seventh, Matt Levine, Brittany Samora with her first career k and Pro Series top ten, finishing eighth, Dylan Gardner in a fourth, Bill McAnally machine takes ninth, and Jack Wood rounds out the top ten. He showed tremendous speed, including in final practice. Todd Zusa takes 11th, Armani Williams takes 12th, Travis Milburn 13th, Austin Thorne in the second, Matt Levine entry 14th, Bill Can makes his can and Pro Series West return with a 15th place result, a disappointing and no doubt a race to forget for Joey Tanner takes 16th, Nick Joni 17th, Cody Vanderwall 18th, Takuma Koga 19th, Ron Jay 20th, and rounding out the field, finishing last and the only retiree was Rich along the third, finishing 21st, Due to an electrical failure, he only completed 69 out of the 150 laps. There was a grand total of three cautions with the average green flag run of 34.5 and 8% of the race distance ending up under caution. Huddleston led seven laps, Tanner Gray 52, Derek Krause 91. Those are the only three drivers to have led despite Deegan starting on the pole. So here is the championship standings after two of 14 races. Deegan hangs on to the championship lead by just only two points over Trevor Huddleston who gained five spots in the championship standings and tied for third is Derek Krause and Jagger Jones who are only three behind Deegan. Todd Sousa is now fifth in points. Matt Levine gains four spots as did Brittany Zamora. Joey Tanner dropped four. Travis Milburn lost one spot and the biggest frustration of them all for one particular driver is indeed Cody Van Roll, who dropped five spots in the championship standings. He is now 10. With that excitement out of the way, the k Pro Series West will have to wait till the month of May to get back in action, and it's also the only racing that the West Tour will see as well, as the Port of Tucson Twin 100s will take place on the 11th of May, and that's the race that hopefully, indeed, in the mind of Cody Vanderwall, will turn things around to prove himself that he is indeed, arguably, the best of the rest outside of the McAnally and Bob Brugatti camp. June, where you have Colorado, Sonoma, Douglas County with three races in that month. It's going to get spicy going into the summer there's no doubt about it but so far this season it's been a tale of multiple stories but the most important thing is the fact that Trevor Huddleston finally got that elusive win he's been lurking in the shadows in that sophomore group remember Huddleston was in that rookie of the year battle a year ago with Haley Deegan but Deegan won that honor 
that all the way down to the last race that ultimately those two got into it a couple times. But Huddleston proved that he is indeed the king of Irwindale. Not just that he snapped the five race winning streak from Bill McAnally. It's the first time since Matt Levine racing Sheldon Creed when he won the inaugural dirt race in Las Vegas last September to someone other than McAnally's cars winning. If you want to go even deeper, it's the first time that a Bob Rucati car won since Derek Thorne at Evergreen Speedway in last August. Bear in mind, this number nine car was the runner-up car of a year ago when it was driven by Ryan Partridge. But the fact that Huddleston put on a great show at a track that he's shown case he's really good at, he, he, did the, he didn't want three championships at that circuit for nothing. It's not for Slough, not just for the fact that his one proud pop-up. As a matter of fact, have a listen how he fell after that epic finish. Tommy! That's my boy! Can you believe it? Hey, go pick him up! Oh my God, that's amazing! Go get your Tommy, kid, Tommy, I'm going to get my boy! That was just a huge sentimental moment. Not just for that. We seen we saw a lot of sentimental and emotional moments that really captivated what racing is just incredible. Well, the Huddleston family, and also, of course, in the Formula One world that everybody, including Lewis Hamilton, even Martin Brundle let the crowd tell the story of how Charles Leclerc did a phenomenal job. He should have won that race. He could have been, a, it could have been an emotional win for Leclerc. And there's no doubt that will happen one day for sure. And for Huddleston, it was a long time coming. And he, that's certainly a win he'll never, ever forget. And I must say, that's one way to win your first win, your first K&N race. Just a, a thrilling battle with Tanner Gray. And boom, you beat him. And then add a little spice in the win. Lost control, hit the wall in turn one. For a moment, I was thinking, I'm pretty sure Tim Huddleston needs to worry about his son getting out of his car first. I know he won and wrecked the, the thing, but don't worry about your son. I know he was so excited as to probably level, so maybe Tom's Ned Jarrett, how he felt when Dale won the 93 Daytona 500. Okay, that's a bit of a stretch, but that's one prop pop-up. But fortunately, Huddleston did get out of his car. He was okay. He brought the... He, you know, man, if it was the 1990s and race versions were still a thing, that car would have been made easily. I don't think that car will be made by Lionel. It would make a hell, it would make a hell of a die cast indeed. But a and n West is, you have to be very super notable or make some historic remarks to get that opportunity. But I would not be surprised if I see someone make a custom die cast of Huddleston's batter race car. This is levels of David Pearson 1976 and Terry Labonte at Bristol in 1995. It's not often you see a batter race car win. I said, some, they said in the PA system that it's like Davey Allison in 1992, the Winston. Well, looking back on it, it's like, Huddleston did get out of his car. He did sell her in Victory Lane. Unfortunately, Davey didn't do that. So it's more like Terry Labonte, 1995. People are raving about this K&N Pro Series West race. Like, you have got, you have David Lance saying it's the best thing going around, which I do agree, compared to the National Series. All three of them, the race has been this year. k and West has really delivered. And that's always great because I know the East gets all the recognition already because NASCAR is still an East-built sport. The fact that the West is getting some tremendous buzz that is not involving or revolving around Haley Deegan, but somebody else is phenomenal. Not just for Huddleston. Let's talk about Tanner Gray. Tanner Gray, runner-up finish. He was a true contender for the entire race. He tried to make that inside line work. And that's the thing. The outside was the preferred lane, but Tanner Gray. I got to give a tip of the cap for Gray. For a guy that... It's in his first year ever in NASCAR, who spent the last two seasons making history in the NHRA Pro Stock World. He's not even 20 yet. He's not. He won the championship. He broke a lot of records. He's the youngest winner in a lot of categories. He won eight times in the Pro Stock category a year ago to win the championship. Makes the move to NASCAR. And he's, he's he made a name of himself, for sure, at Irwindale. Not just that. It's great to see a DGR car. Remember, that's the championship winning team on the east side when Tyler Ankrum won, which, by the way, Ankrum had a phenomenal run, t finished six at Texas. That's certainly going to help his cost to catch up and gain a lot of momentum from Harrison Burner, who did not have a great race at all. Gilliland is another one that I just feel like that Gilliland is at is not going to be the, it's not going to be a KBM next year. The, the way he ran last night, it shows me that he's going to be getting the boot. From Kyle Busch, which is a, which is definitely a darn shame. But back to Gray, that's impressive. But once again, second straight race in a row for a young guy that comes this close of winning and tried everything to make it happen. 
It's going to be gutted, but I think this is one race that he'll never forget. I'm pretty sure for Tanner Gray. There's a lot of racing left, and we'll see how he does at Bristol because that is the next round for the East, and a couple of the Bill McAnally guys will be running that one, including Deegan. Tip of the cap for Tanner Gray. He really had a strong I I said to myself, that's, that's going to be the dark horse pick. My pick was Trevor Huddleston because of the history he has, and I felt like that could be the guy that could stop the McAnally cars. And then Tanner Gray, I felt like, we'll see how he does. In a short track, let's see how he does with a DGR car on the west side. Because me and William Sequin, who rode the last car stuff for the k and West a year ago, we pretty much agree that it will be interesting to see how he, how DGR and how many races will DGR enter with him in that 15 car. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. But yeah, the outside line was the idea. The only way to make that inside work is lap traffic, which I hate to call out a particular particular drivers but there's some that were definitely a moving chicane and there's no doubt that was ron shay who finished 20th finished six laps down he was a moving chicane no doubt there was moments that were like he Denner gray Haley deegan Derek Krause. there were multiple times that they that a wreck should have happened but didn't happen he was definitely he was definitely in the way of a lot of drivers so once again lap traffic played a role but fortunately this one no lap traffic. It was just purely the two best cars, when it mattered most, got the job done. And that's what Huddleston and Gray did. For Huddleston, remember, he had to deal with a mechanical problem. That win almost could have not happened, would have never happened. The fact that they, that car held on for the second half, though, it looked like it was going to be a lost cause and another disappointing race. He made something out of it. So, this is a huge confidence booster for him. And I think. With that momenta, I would keep an eye on him for the rest of the season, for sure. And speaking of the last lead change, and I know FansChoice.tv doesn't have a replay team. They just record it on the fly and pick and choose as they go. But there was no need to see Deegan and Jones battling for fourth, knowing that Tanner Gray and Trevor Huddleston were catching Derek Krause. There were no reason to keep that battle going and showing. You have multiple cameras. And the thing is, the NBCSN telecast, the tape delay, will not be until April 8th. So two things will be remain. Do they have the pass, the final lead change that put Huddleston in front? Two, was there really contact between Deegan and Tanner Gray? Those are the things that we need to uh, we need to figure out our own when we watch the telecast. So after the April 8th tape delay race is over with, I may do another analysis on the west coast Wednesday they see what they showed and what they not and see if anything that i we don't know really based on what we saw on the screen later on speaking of that i'll say a special announcement regarding west coast wednesday that that i hope to implement and make it keep it going because like i said it won't be till may 11th for the can and race to return on the west side of course we gotta talk about how ben McAnally cars did at bristol and anything else around the Canon and West Worlds that are newsworthy and we're talking about. But that, that's the second straight race in the row I left with a negative impression. The Vegas race was the timings. They needed to push it several hours earlier for it to be policing and accommodating for those East Coast viewers. This time around, it's that you gotta, you, when, you, when you hear the PA announcers, if you can, and they know they can, whoever's running into the production side, you show the battle for the lead right away. I know you got to show Deegan because Deegan is probably what a lot of people mostly why they care about the West to begin with. A lot of people just care because Deegan is in it. That is just a whole cold hard fact. But for me, was trying to do this show, trying to make it some, make it a thing for the long haul. You got to show the battle for the lead because you basically missed it. You missed the final lead change. Fans caught Gray and Tan. And Trevor Huddleston already passing Kraus. That's just unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. But fortunately, the race, the finish was hell of good that it could be forgotten about. But for me, I don't forget. So that was a huge blemish on the TV side. To not show the final lead change. The actual let pass for the final lead change. Because had Gray cleared Huddleston at the line, which was 31 thousandths of a second to be exact, in case you didn't know or forgotten already, had Tanner Gray beat him on the inside line, then that failed, that missed lead change would have been obsolete. I wouldn't be discussing it right now. But since Gray didn't successfully pass Huddleston on the bottom, it needs to be emphasized and discussed. So hopefully by Tucson, it gets improved and show and kind of rely on those PA announcers because... That's what they rely on, the PA announcing system. They do. 
And also, I would have stuck around to hear Bob Brunkati's songs and also show the final results graphic like you did at Vegas. So from a production side, they did some things, but there's some that I didn't really like and how it was personally executed. So I got him out the finger, sort that thing out and show the final results before you officially sign off. If you want to show final results while Bob Brunkati was talking, perfect. That would have been great. Otherwise, all we saw was just a bunch of ramblings and then Derek Cross gear. Excuse my language, but but that boom explosion. As a matter of fact, here it is. Boom. Just can't get over how crazy that was. Hey. Oh. All right. Now that's Owendale, baby. Holy crap. I think we weren't ready for that, huh, Tommy? All right. Who had the burrito? Whoa. <laughs> Just so you know how it's supposed to happen with the confetti. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> right? Woo! Sorry, well, too many better, better late than never. Right? I knew that tacos were good, but woo! woo Speaking of Derek Krause, this is the second straight race of the season that he's led the most laps but didn't win. This is one of the things that's going to hurt him. Sure, he's only three markers behind Deegan, and, and the tight battle that looks like it may be coming down to those four guys, maybe five or six if we get fortunate and look and see how the other competitors do. That's probably not a good feeling because it was another race that Kraus basically controlled. He didn't completely dominate the race because Tanner Gray had a really good showing. Surratt, he really was a competitive threat to Kraus, but he did put a nice valiant effort to extend that streak to six in a row. And for that 16 car in particular, would have been four since Todd won the last three before the layoff in 2018 where there were no error nail action for the k series. We'll see how he does at Bristol. We'll see how he does on the east side. He's He won New Smyrna. He's the only one that's won so far the only race. So we'll see how he does going forward. He's in an okay spot. He's not that far behind from Deegan. But for him to really be the true standout that I know he can be, he needs to Hopefully, luck is still on the side. That's going to be the central theme of Kraus this season of whether or not he'll be a champion or come up short. It's the luck. Compared to Vegas, he had a really strong result. Remember I said in the last episode that a top five is strong. A strong run. It's also great to see 21 cars out there because the initial entry list showed 19. That's a really healthy field compared to the many recent races we've seen in the Canon West where they're barely under 20 and some just barely 15. We'll see how the turnout goes on in Tucson, Arizona. But I talked about Tanner Gray in high praise, Trevor Huddleston, Brittany Zamora. I said she was going to be a true dark horse contender. I said that's one to kind of keep an eye on because I felt like we'll see how she does. And she was in the top five for a good portion of the second half of the race. She was having a pretty interesting battle with Deegan and the Bob Brucati cars. Like I said, this is the run that she needed. Sure, she's got to go through Sonoma later in June. For the lack of better terms in 2020, she's going to be the face of k n West for the women's side. It's nice to see two women in the same team. That's some good stuff. That's a good PR. But for Samora, for, for being from Kennewick, and I'm from the state of Washington to be exact, I'm more curious to see how she does because there's no driver from the state of Washington. So with Casey Kane retired, Greg Biffle which, by the way, will make his NASCAR return at Texas in June for Kyle Busch Motorsports. But there's no driver from the state of Washington to really lean our, our cap on other to a degree now, Angela Rock. But one for the future, for the long haul, Samora is pretty much what we have left at this very moment in time. We pretty much have high expectations for her. And as far as her and the Rookie of the Year battle, she trails Jagger Jones by 14 points. She's seventh. To Jones is fourth. Well, technically Jones is tied for third, but it's theoretically fourth because Kraus has more had has more of a result leverage. But technically that shouldn't be the case because Jones finished second, Kraus got third, so he should be third in points by technicality and tiebreakers indeed. But it is what it is. And then and then on that hindsight, Joey Tanner should be seventh and Samora eighth with the tiebreaker. Of course they're tied for seventh, but let's ignore all that technical stuff for a moment. Just discuss that. A good run. Really good run. It's her first K&N Pro Series Top 10. A nice showing. A little bit more better than what she, what she had at the east side of New Smyrna in February. We'll see if she can hang tight with Jones as far as that Rookie of the Year battle. And see if we can have a tremendous battle for once again between McAnally and Bobby Rookie for Rookie of the Year. Like last year with Deegan and Huddleston. Man, I, can't, I, just, I just can't express how well this race was. It was just intense. Classic short track racing. I'm glad. People are praising the West, the ultimate short track racing hub 
is on the east. So it's good exposure for the west to get a great finish, a great race overall. It doesn't really revolve on one driver. So this gets no doubt a passing grant. I give this race about a 9.5 out of 10. It was just wonderful. A few production, production things aside, the race quality was stellar. Fear stout. So now we go on to Tucson, Arizona. For Vanderwall, he just had he had a rough going. As I mentioned, he had a flat tire. He had to bring it to the pits. It's a beautiful paint scheme. It reminds me of Shane Hall's Lance Snacks, or even Jeff Purvis, the Lance Snacks Bush Grand Hessel look. It stands out for sure. Not the night he won it. Same thing for Joey Tanner. Definitely a night to forget. So those are the two I expect for a great turnaround at Tucson, especially for Randall who swept the Tucson races. So he has a lot of expectations to prove himself that this alliance is going to be legit and possibly knock on the doors between the McAnally and Bob Brucati cars. It's great to see him have sponsorship, no doubt, because that's what he struggled a lot a year ago, not having that sponsorship like he did in 2017 with Can-Am. So with that being said, the Can-Am West are off to a phenomenal start. Not just with, with Vegas, this is good momentum. This is really good momentum. And the fans finally seeing it live instead of waiting on tape delay or not even seeing it at all makes it all perfect. It's certainly a great time to be following the k and Pro Series, not just the West, but also on the East, giving support. And also, the modifies always put on a tremendous show. You got a lot of stuff. TV is the where it's where it's at. If you want to see it live instead of waiting for a week or a couple weeks of the case for this one, you go ahead and see it. So without being said, this will do it with episode number four. Four of West Coast Wednesday, where I discussed the 2019 Ineos Napa Auto Parts 150 at Irwindale. Until we meet again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'll certainly discuss about what NBCSN's tape delay cover showed that we didn't see on fanstories.tv. And also, expect a little different edition of West Coast Wednesday because a particular race is taking place on the West Coast that I'll be going. I will say that on the next episode. It may involve some open wheels. So in the meantime, I'll catch you guys later. Once again, Trevor Huddleston is a NASCAR Canon Pro Series West winner.